On today's episode, we are doing some Christmas themed thrift lips, so let's get started. We are going to be headed about 50 minutes away to go shopping at a thrift store that I've been to before and I've had really good success at. If I sound a little funny, it's because I just got braces on. It's a long story. I know my teeth are straight, but I've got kind of like a weird bite. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is ThreadUp. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them in just a second, but for now, let's get on the road. It's a beautiful drive. We've arrived, so let's go see what we can find. I don't know, I just feel like I need this in my life, but it's kind of expensive at $25. And would I DIY it? Would I do anything with it? I'm not sure. I'm gonna think on it. I'm gonna put it in my cart for now though. I think I'm doing pretty good. What do you think of this? I feel like I need to get it. What do you think? This was a good day to come. Okay, so I love the joy sign, but it's a little bit high and I've already got a full cart of a lot of other stuff. So I'm going to put it back. I might regret that, but I've got some good stuff. So I feel like we hit the mother load. I'm really excited about everything we got. So let's get back and do some flips on them. So we are back from our thrifting adventures. I'm still getting used to these darn braces. I hope you'll bear with me. I really feel like I sound funny. <laughs> We're gonna muscle through this. For our first thrift flip, I found this wooden box several months ago. It was not on this trip, but I knew that I wanted to do it on this Christmas episode. So we're gonna start here because this one is my favorite one and how it turned out. We're gonna be doing a Christmas tree box. The first thing we're gonna do on this Christmas tree box is remove the hardware and then we are going to do two coats of white chalk paint as a preparation for our next step, which is I created this printable. I will link it for you to use for free. Right now it's a ledger sized document and it's reversed. You need it to be reversed for this process. And then I've also provided another one of a French stripe and you'll see why in just a second. Now after our paint dries, then we're going to take our picture. We are going to cut it down to size so that it fits right on top of our box. And then we are going to apply a thick coat of this Liquitex matte gel medium. Not too heavy, not too thick, but just right. <laughs> and then we are going to put our image face down on it, kind of very carefully smoothing out any air bubbles. And then we are going to take our stripes and do the same thing to, and match up the stripe of our top piece and wrap that on the front and the back of the box. Now, some of you might be asking why I just didn't paint the French stripe on. I just kind of wanted to see how this would work. You could totally paint on the, the French stripe if you wanted to, but I figured if this works, this would be a really cool technique. Then we let that dry at least two hours. I let mine dry overnight. And then once it's fully dry, we are going to take a bowl of water and a soft cloth and just really saturate the paper. Then you kind of start to rub it and, and it will kind of ball up and it will be a total mess at this point. It'll be like, what have I gotten myself into? But just be patient with the process. Don't get too aggressive in areas where I got a little bit too over eager you pull off a little bit more of that image where you can be patient and very careful you leave more of the image and this is what we ended up with at the end and then once it's dry you may want to run your hand over it again and some of those extra fibers will kind of work their way off now at this point I kind of wanted to blend out some of the seams of where the matte gel medium had been and so I just went ahead and very lightly sanded across the entire thing and around the edges of the box very ever so slightly distress this. And after we have all kind of evened out and smoothed out, then I went back in with this Waverly clear matte varnish and varnished it all out. And that helps resaturate the colors a bit and protect it from any more distressing and gives it a nice finish. And then of course we reattached our hardware and here we 
have a Christmas box that is so beautiful with the French script, the Christmas tree, all of this. I think this would look great out all winter. It's not necessarily Christmas specific, so you could leave it out all winter long and it would look so beautiful. I thought it would be really fun to put maybe a special Christmas gift in it, maybe even Christmas ornaments. This is definitely probably my favorite of the episode. That's why I started out with that. I love how this turned out, but what do you think? Look, Dolly, it's Happy Mail. We love our thread up boxes, huh? Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of this episode. I am going to show you all of my ThreadUp finds. I love shopping on ThreadUp because it is a ton of choices. I love that I can select items that are either brand new or in like new condition. I don't have to go sort through a ton of racks to maybe find something or not. I love this. ThreadUp's the world's largest thrift store and you can tell because there's selection. Now, I want to show you this first outfit because I adore this outfit. I really think this screams like the holiday season. This top is, I believe, by Shane, and I think they said the estimated retail for this was $15.99, and I paid, I think, $12.90 for it. I'll put the prices all up here. I don't feel like this top looks like a $15.99 top. I love kind of like the poet style with it. I love kind of the peplum style here and the bow. It's super cute. It's a nice Christmas red not super bright. It's a really comfortable top and then I paired it with these kind of houndstooth shiny pants <laughs> that are really cute. These pants I think originally retailed for $19. I got them for $9.50 which is a great deal. They were brand new condition. They look super cute. They fit well. And I paired it with these cute little booties that I've had forever. I love this outfit. I feel like I look pretty cute. I don't know where I'm gonna go in this outfit, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> Some of you might recognize this dress from last week's episode. I loved this dress so much. I knew I needed to wear it for my last episode. This is from the Hera collection. It originally retailed for $36, which I think is a good buy as it is, but I got it on ThreadUp for $19.99. I paired it with these splurge items for me. These are some Michael Kors cheetah print boots that I think are so cute. They originally retail for $200. $125 and she's back. <laughs> Photo bombing. Anyways, I got him for $67.99, which is a great deal. Dolly approves. Say hi, Dolly. Okay. Go find something else to do. I feel like everybody needs a good denim jacket. I loved the cut of this one. It's by Converse, I believe. And the estimated retail for this was about $60. I paid $21.99, which I thought was a really good deal. And then I paired it with this DKNY red turtleneck top. It originally retailed for $45 and I paid $11.99. And then of course, these really cute black DKNY jeggings. The estimated retail for that I believe is about $179 and I paid $33.99 and I love this outfit. What do you think? And just like every girl needs a denim jacket, every girl needs a cheetah print jacket as well. I love this one. It's super cute. It's from Chico's. Then I paired it with this cute ruched kind of knit skirt. The estimated retail on this skirt was about $22. I paid $6.99 and I think this is a really cute look. What do you think? Okay, so for our next thrift flip, we are gonna be doing a kind of topiary Christmas tree using a tomato cage that I found at the thrift store. I found this tomato cage for $6.99. It already had Christmas lights on it. It looked like it had some other stuff on it at one point, but it had been stripped down and it was kind of in rough shape. But this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. So all we're gonna do is I took it outside and I started wrapping it like crazy in some Dollar Tree garland and it's very cheap. Well, it's a dollar. <laughs> and I just kept going around and I realized how fast it was eating up the garland. So I kind of went back and kind of stretched it out a little bit better. I used up what I had and then I continued on with several different other kinds of garlands that I had. Some of them were from Walmart, the kind of the $3 garland from Walmart. It's a little bit um, thicker and bulkier than the Dollar Tree stuff. And then I got a couple of really nice garlands that were maybe like 
$11 from Walmart. So it was an assortment of those three garlands. And I just kept spiraling around the tree. And then I realized that I needed some more. So I went back and cut some more. And then I finished out this tomato cage Christmas tree. I added some extra Christmas lights that I had in my stash. I think it turned out really cute. I pulled out a topiary in my bedroom. And so I'm gonna keep this displayed as a little Christmas tree in my bedroom. And you can see kind of in the background here that I've done a little Christmas spirit here in my bedroom. I did a bedroom makeover recently. If you haven't seen the episode, I really love my new bedroom. It's spectacular. I'll link that bedroom makeover in the description box below. I really love it. All zhuzhed up a little bit for Christmas. I'll give you a couple more peaks coming up here in just a minute with one of our upcoming DIYs, but I love this Christmas tree in here. I think it turned out great. And all it needed was a little garland. I mean, how easy is that? Our next thrift flip, I found this kind of rustic looking star on a stand and it had a light in it and I, I didn't quite know what it was supposed to be and I didn't know quite what I was going to do with it. Here's what I came up with. The first thing I did is I took a piece of scrap wood that was approximately 12 inches long and about nine inches tall. I didn't have to cut it down. It was already in my scrap stash. I just took a little wood glue and nailed it on and then we were good to go with the next step which is I initially thought that I might spray it out all white and with spray paint, but it was really sucking up the wood and I knew that it would need something a lot thicker. So I just chucked this up as a primer. <laughs> And then I did two very thick coats of white chalk paint and let that fully dry. Now, while that was drying, I cut out a Oh Holy Night and a Nativity Manger scene um, out of some permanent vinyl. And you'll see here that it was a little tricky kind of getting it off. For this type of vinyl, you really need to use a strong grip transfer tape. I didn't have it, I just had it the regular kind. So it was a little tricky getting it off, but we did eventually get it on and it was so beautiful. I loved the gold accent to it. But then I just felt like it was kind of unfinished and there was that little box around the base. So I just hot glued some floral foam in and then I just took some bushes of greenery that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's frosted, it's beautiful. Their, their Christmas greenery right now is so pretty at the Dollar Tree. I am super impressed with what they've got this year. And that's saying a lot because I'm not the biggest Dollar Tree DIYer. That's no shaming to anybody else. That's just my my, my personal thing, but they've really upped their game at Dollar Tree on their florals. I am super impressed. Then we reattached the light and that's it. And this really primitive looking, shabby looking star got a new lease on life and is a very glam, high-end looking nativity manger scene that I think is really cute. Holidays and cheer. What do you think? weeks ago, I did a letter for Santa mailbox in one of my episodes. It was super cute, but it was on the larger scale of things. Then on my thrifting trip, I found this really adorable, cute little mailbox. It was galvanized still, and it had kind of a red flag on it. And I knew that we could maybe make a smaller version with this one. And so what I did is I took another thrifted item that we picked up on our trip, which is a candlestick, totally wild color scheme. It didn't really matter. I started out by chalk painting that candlestick in two coats of their crimson red chalk paint. And then it didn't really match the color of red that was on the little flag. Then I got bright red acrylic paint and did a couple of coats of that. And then it ended up being very close to the same color. But the finish was very flat. So I took this triple thick coat kind of a varnish finish and I did a very thick coat of that on the outside 
and it says not to work it too much and it, that is true. You kind of want to get it on nice and even right away and don't muss and fuss with it too much. So then we're going to let that dry. Then I cut out on my Cricut machine some vinyl lettering again that said letters to Santa. I kind of just designed this image in there. I kind of did it layered with the green and the red and then I also did a ho 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 vinyl as well and I attached the letters to Santa on the front of the mailbox and then I put the ho 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 on the side where it near the flag. I thought that was super cute. And then we need to attach it. So I took some of my clear Gorilla Glue, which is very heavy duty strength. And then I put a lot of that on the candlestick. And then I also put on some hot glue just for that instant stick because the Gorilla Glue takes a little bit longer to dry. And that's it. And now we have this really cute, very traditional Christmas looking letter to Santa mailbox that was very inexpensive, very easy to put together. And I love how this turned out. It's a tabletop one. It's a much smaller scale one than the last one we made, but it's super cute. What do you think? thrift flip. I found this beautiful table runner and it had these kind of cream wool snowflakes on it on this red and it just screamed Pottery Barn. I don't know where it originally came from but it really had a Pottery Barn vibe. Well on one side of it one of the wool pieces was kind of stained and I thought even if we tried to clean that off it probably would never fully get unstained. So what I decided to do is actually cut off one of the ends with a snowflake on it and we are going to stuff in a pillow okay it fit in there perfectly this is just one that I had on hand and then I just folded it in on itself found some red thread matched it up with what was already there and stitched down the side and how easy is that? We have the most beautiful lumbar pillow. You can kind of see it in the background. It matches up with another lumbar pillow that I had from previous years that says joy on it. It also has a very Pottery Barn vibe as well. Then you can see my Pottery Barn knockoff sign in the background here. I made that on an episode a couple weeks ago. Super cute, right? <laughs> So it really ties this room together. I really love how this pillow turned out. What do you think? All right, so next up, we are gonna be combining three thrifted items into one thrift flip, if you will. So I found this gold base stand, and then I also found a hurricane that kind of had like a little wreath around it. It was kind of a sorry looking wreath. <laughs> it was not very pretty. And then I found this beautiful box of vintage magnolias that were very Christmassy feeling and kind of sugared or snowed on, if you will. I knew that I could really combine all three to make a very beautiful finished look. So the first thing that I did was I gave the glass hurricane a good cleaning. Then I clipped off all of the red berries that were in the little hurricane arrangement. Now I could have probably left them, but I really kind of wanted to have it like a glamorous white and gold look. So I clipped out the berries and then I taped off the ri rim of the edge and I took some gold rub and buff and kind of very carefully rubbed that on the rim of our little hurricane glass. Then what I did is I sat our hurricane onto the gold plate that I found again, and then I tucked in those magnolia pieces in like the bare spots. And I didn't glue any of this in because I wanted to have the ability to take it apart and use it for something else if I wanted to down the road, so I didn't glue it in. I think it's fine. Then I went ahead and I took some more of that same kind of frosted Christmas greens that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I cut off some of those pieces and kind of tucked those in there. I also found this beautiful gold glittered berries at the Dollar Tree, clipped off some of those and tucked them in. And then I added a 
Dollar Tree battery operated candle. Now I have the most beautiful little arrangement. It could be really cute as a centerpiece on a table. I have it on my little nightstand here and I think it is just super elegant, super pretty. I love this thrift flip. What do you think? Next up, I found this Merry Christmas stocking holder or at least that's what I assumed it was for. I'm not really sure, but that's what I'm gonna be using it for. It was a little rougher around the edges, but nothing is super crazy. Some of the lettering was bent and the color scheme didn't really work for what I wanted it for. So I did the best I could to kind of bend out some of those edges. And then I very carefully came in and taped everything off and I spray painted the star, the Merry Christmas and the base in this kind of of pewter color and kind of gave it a fresh new look and then that's it how easy was that right we can use it to hang stockings and this is a really great idea if you can find one of these in a thrift store if you don't have a fireplace to hang your stockings from you can find something like this and hang them from that but super easy super cute what do you think Okay, so for this next thrift flip, it's so easy. I almost cannot call it a thrift flip because all I did is I found these gorgeous kind of bronze mercury glass candlesticks. And then I had some Christmas wreaths that I set on top of them and then some really fat battery operated candles that I set on top of that. Layering it up gives it a very Christmas or winter flair. You could definitely leave this up into January, February if you'd like. And it was so easy to put together. Keep that in mind. You could do this in the spring, in the fall. The same idea, same principle. Put a little wreath around it and you have a beautiful elevated look. What do you think? Now I want to thank ThreadUp once again for sponsoring this episode. If you want to check them out and update your holiday wardrobe, as well. They have provided you with a coupon code. I'll link it in the description box below. The coupon code is Natalie. <laughs> so that's pretty easy. But if you want to save 30% off your first order, then use that code. Check them out. I love ThreadUp. It's so much fun. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right there. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.